Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm Nozomi Ito from Japan. Today, in this session, I'd like to introduce about uh, how we use Appium as our product's core library. First, I'd like to introduce about myself. I'm founder and CEO and developer of Trident Inc. in Japan. Trident Inc. is a venture company in Japan. I love Selenium and Appium. Even I wrote a Selenium book in Japanese. And also, I'm organizer of a Selenium community in Japan and a Selenium conference Tokyo this year. This is photo of user community and Selenium conference event. So, and I also must say about the relationship between me and India. Actually, this is not my first trip to India. So about 10 years ago, I, I still a university student when I visited North India, yeah, Delhi, Agra, and Benaraj. Yeah, it was a very excited trip. So at that time, I, I didn't uh, imagine uh, I could uh, visit India again in such a way. It is very great. Uh, anyway, this is today's agenda. First, I, uh, I explain about uh, the background of this company. And then, I explain about uh, two main topics. Provide uh, more user-friendly Appium wrapper feature and uh, making Appium more reliable and stable. So first topic is background. Yeah, this is my company's product. My company product name is MagicPod. This is test automation cloud service and uh, codeless and human-friendly script support. Uh, human um, user can write test script in browser and uh, can run it on cloud device. No installation is required. And its backend is Appium. For iOS, we use an uh, XCUI test driver. And for Android, we use UI Automator 2 driver. I think it, this is very common structure of using Appium. And for client library, currently we use Node.js, Node.wd library. But we are planning to switch to WebDriver I.O. And uh, although we use Appium, there are some difficulties for, for such use. Yeah, first difficulty is uh, since our Web service is for code testing, testing tool. Some users are not familiar with Appium. Users uh, prefer, um, prefer simple command rather than complicated but flexible command. So we need to provide uh, user-friendly commands. And the second difficulty is requirements for quality and stability of Appium is very severe. Uh, because for, for us, Appium is just not for test code, but for production code. So we need to, more caref to be more careful about the uh, quality of Appium. So for this background, we, uh, following this background, I speak about to this main topic. First topic is uh, user-friendly wrapper. So uh, generally, uh, most of commands of MagicPod are wrapper of Appium commands. For example, as uh, you can easily imagine, this input command is a uh, wrapper of uh, Appium's clear and send keys command. But not all commands are such simple wrapper. Some magic pod commands are more aggressive and tricky logic it has, so, and uh, just not simple wrapper. So today, I want to introduce uh, unique ones and uh, their implementation. It includes uh, yeah, scroll, wait, picker, uh, fast source 3, and uh, AI locator. So first pick is scroll to lazy loaded element. Yeah, API, uh, as you can see, Appium actually already has a scroll to specific element feature. For iOS, uh, you can use mobile scroll command. And for UI to drive, you are automated to driver, you can use scroll into view command. By using both command, you can easily scroll into specified element. So, but uh, both commands have some problem. 
Yeah, for, exam uh, for example, for XGI test, if target element is outside of screen and uh, not, not emerged until scroll into the current screen, uh, for such case, mobile scroll command does not work. It just fails. And for UI automated driver, such problem does not happen, but uh, scroll into view is uh, instead does not work for all type of element. If element has scroll bar, it usually mm, generally works, but uh, for example, for example, G -ma Google map like uh, component, it does not work. Yeah, it depends on component type. So we need a more easy to use wrapper. So then I implemented the this swipe to command. Swipe to command accepts for four argument. Yeah, locator strategy, locator value, and uh, direction and uh, literal, literal limits. And, and the first line, back, um, background black line is uh, yeah, our internal logic. And the second line, gray GUI is uh, fat, api, um, fat our user sees. And with this single command, this command can cover Android, iOS, and both Regi loaded and for existing method. So I want to show demo and sample code. Uh, it might be a little small. Wait. So this is example. This swipe to example. In this demo, I'd like to show swipe to Adelaide City by continuing swipe. In this map, Adelaide is not uh, imaged yet, so this, this command try, literally continue to swipe. And uh, once this is imaged, this command finish. It works. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I'm not, uh, I don't know well about this city, just for demo. Mm. And this is implementation of this logic. This, this retries many times for with specified limit until you reach the limit. For first iteration, it get element and just do swipe a little. And this is swipe a little implementation. This is not so difficult. Yeah, just calculate the direction based on direction value, and do swipe using touch action. Press wait move to and release. And for last iteration, it's just find the element, and if element is still not found, it throws error. These commands are already open sourced. Uh, GitHub's repository and uh, magic pod WD APM helper. If you want to use uh, this command for similar situation, you can try. This is open source and uh, under by MIT or a Apache license. Yeah, this repository. Okay, then let's move to the next command. Next command is catch all command. This is a more tricky than first command. So the problem uh, of magic uh, appium weight is, yeah, since magic pot is uh, not usually appium expert, so some users don't know um, which weight logic to use. Yeah, actually, magic pot has some uh, support, some weight command, implicit weight command and uh, explicit weight command. Implicit command means uh, if find element and assert fails, it retries uh, several times. And uh, explicit command means explicitly wait, uh, for example, wait text or wait visible or and so on. But in case user can't find uh, which wait to 
um, to use or which, which element to wait. For such case, we use uh, more aggressive catch or uh, do everything wait. Yeah, this is we call wait for rendered command. This, and this is continue to take screenshot and uh, compare image and uh, until the image becomes the same, it's continue to wait. So this might sound a little tricky, but uh, I think this is the same way as human has uh, um, wait or page load. Maybe page, most, in most case, human judges uh, whether page load completed or not uh, based on animation finish or locator indicator, uh, indicator finish. So I think this traces the human behavior. So, and also this, um, so one, one more trick, as one more trick, uh, we ignore the um, top header part of uh, application. On header part, clock or Wi-Fi or battery image exists, and uh, usually it's continued to animation, to animate, so we ignore this part. So i show you the demonstration. This is demo. Yeah, once app started, yeah, this indicator can start. And uh, since it is still work, it's continue to wait. So take screenshot is relatively fast, but uh, image comparison is a little slow. So, and even, so still continue wait. But since now mm, indicator is stopped, then a little, after a little time, wait also completed. It, it checks only images. So, and this is the implementation of wait for rendered. This continued wait by mm, appearing with wait for command. It's, it's first take screenshot, and if current screenshot and previous screenshot and previous previous screenshot are all the same, it finishes the wait. And if some images are still different, it's continued to wait until uh, reach the limit time. And uh, image comparison are not but yeah, relatively simple. First, it broke out, uh, um, ignores the uh, uh, top 5% layers. And uh, by using BlinkDiff, a uh, Node.js image comparison library, it check it whether the image are exactly, exactly the same. Although BlinkDiff is implemented in native code, it is still a little slow. Maybe because uh, it still uses uh, some Node.js layer. So maybe we switch uh, Blink Diff to more native code centric way. Maybe I can expect uh, more performance improvement. Can okay, I switch back to core example? Uh, this is some limitation. Maybe. Maybe you, as you can already imagine, application under test must, must have a proper load animation or indicator. If page load is continued but, uh, but there is no animation or indicator, this weight returns immediately. But I think this, such UI is also not, for friend, not friendly for human. But this is this command's limitation. And the next topic is about IS, iOS picker oil. Picker oil means, uh, yeah, as you can, you can see top, uh, top right side. Yeah, this is uh, number, number or data selecting input area. So Appium already support picker manipulation command. For your automata to driver, you can use send keys command. It just sounds a little tricky, but it works well. And, uh, but for iOS, in some case, it does not work. But instead, uh, APM provides select picker for your value command. 
this accept uh, picker element and uh, quit order, yeah, top or next order and uh, offset. How, how much amount uh, top um, scroll down or up in each swipe. And uh, of course, the problem on this command is uh, what actually we want is uh, to setting specific picker command. It is not a uh, mm, unit swiping. So, mm -hmm. so but if, if we want to set a specific value, we need to return, continue to select a picker oil value by uh, loop command many times. So I think it is complicated. And also another, co another problem is picker move direction depends on current value. Yeah. If you want to set a picker value to five, but uh, current, com current value is one, you need to maybe swipe upward. But if current value is 10, you need to swipe downside, uh, opposite direction. So it depends on current value. So I think such implementation is a little complicated. So we decided to provide a better app. This is input to pick a lap command. This accept element, uh, pick a element, and uh, target value, and uh, direction, and uh, retry limit. So internally, this command will continue small swipe continuously until you reach to specific value. And the unique point is direction auto. So I explain more about uh, direction. So direction can accept uh, five pattern of value. And top and bottom are relatively maybe easy to understand. If you already know which direction to swipe, you can just specify top or bottom comma parameter. And if you already know the proper direction, but uh, in case it fails, you want to try another direction, you can use top then bottom or bottom then top direction. And if, you, if, if proper direction can change according to situation or you don't know which direction to, to choose, you can use auto command, auto parameter. If in fact the direction based on the current value, the current value is usually, in many cases, number. So actually, infer inferring correct, correct direction is possible. So this is the code example and demo. So this is an example. So for fast picker, mm. set, 40, set 40 value by auto. And for next picker, set 225 by auto, auto command. So, and this is the demonstration. Oh, sorry. I clicked too much. So first picker is swipe, uh, uh, determine direction automatically and move to value 40 by continuously swiping. And second, and second picker, it determines, uh, also determines direction and swipe to uh, downside. Yes, it works like this this way. And this is the implementation. It is more complicated than others. So for Android, it is simple. Uh, just uh, if, if platform is Android, it is just send keys. And if, but if for iOS, it first uh, get element and then determine correct direction. If top, top and then 
tops and bottom is specified. Order is calculated as next, and but also invert direction literal is also possible. But if top or bottom is specified, order is next or previous, but uh, invert literal is false. And if auto is specified, uh, here, auto is specified, it decides to pick a selection order automatically and uh, then swipe according to this direction. And after calculation, it tries a continuous, continuous swipe, swipe according to value. And if continuous swipe fails, it tries invert trial. So this is the main part of logic. And I also introduced this auto-inference part. So this part first uh, get the uh, current value and uh, target value and uh, try to convert both to number. For example, if current value is one day or two day, the converted number is one, one and two. And if conversion doesn't work, it simply tries uh, next direction and if it fails, opposite direction. And if if converted to, it is possible to convert to number, it determines the correct direction based on small and big, big relationship. So, and maybe by default, it assumes the picker's number ascending order. But, in, but of course, sometimes it can be descending order. So for such, for such case, it's, Try the simple small swipe, and uh, if if it found uh, mm, direction is actually descending, it tries inversion invert direction. Yeah. So this is the implementation. So I have some implement implement idea in the future. Actually, currently inference works only for number. But if data has some kind of order, inference for other type of data is also possible. For example, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, or January, February, and December, or country name in dictionary, in dictionary order. All, all orders can be inferable. So if we imp implement such a feature in the future, I think uh, I can say this is some kind of AI, AI iOS picker for you command. Yeah, okay. Then I move to next command. Next command is yeah, faster source XML for iOS. Yeah, APM has a source XML command. So by using this, you can get XML of current UI3. UI I'm not sure how many. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how many people feel it is so important uh, source XML accuracy. But uh, for test test automation tool, it is very important because uh, usually it's auto automatically calculate locator based on XML tree. So its speed and accuracy is very important. And the Problem of current RPM source three command is big three retrieval takes too much time. So, and uh, if three is very bigger, very bigger, uh, if uh, internal timeout happens and uh, even empty three can be returned. So, this actually happened in some users' application. But luckily, uh, RPM has. Uh, faster command for X source 3 retrieval. It is mobile source command in format description. It is only for iOS, but very faster than other command, uh, usual normal 3 command. This returns YAML-like uh, YAML -like 3, and uh, I'm not sure what actually what uh, format it is. This is like 
Yeah, space indentant free, and I have never seen such format. It even contains some kind of strange, strange arrow character. So, as you can see, uh, passing this tree is a little difficult. Separate, uh, separators are not, uh, not displayed correctly, and uh, escape is not uh, executed correctly sometimes. This is very difficult to pass, but because maybe this is just for display or debug information and not intended to, intended to pass. So this is just debug information for Apple, and in the future, the format might be changed. This is a little risky, but faster than normal command. And, and return description tree is, has almost the same information as normal standard three, but some small difference. First difference is size and position difference. It's, it's different one or two pixel. So I, I'm, I searched the why it's different hap difference happens, but I'm not sure why. Mm. Not round nor floor nor cell function, I'm not sure. And other difference is visible information is not included. But anyway, locator calculate, for locator calculation, such difference is not a big problem. So we can generate XML3 based on this, this description tree. And, uh, and this description is tree is much faster than normal tree. This is performance comparison. For normal tree, it takes about uh, Mm, uh, about uh, one second. But for description three, it returns within 189 milliseconds. It is about uh, around uh, nine or 10 times faster than normal three. And for big three, normal source three command uh, requires uh, um, more than 166 milli. 66 seconds. And but description three returns about uh, five or six seconds. I'm not sure five or six seconds is so fast, but but at least uh, 30, more than 30 times faster than normal three. So I'd like to show you the example. So this is a description three. And this is the XML3. So, and uh -huh. oh, I can't find uh, here. By using this three converter, I can get uh, actual XML3 from description three. So this converter logic is also open source. If you want to try this, you can use. And the next topic is about AI locator. Do you know what is AI locator? This is, this is uh, uh, explained by Jonathan yesterday, and uh, this is implemented based, based on APM's plugin feature and created by third party test.ai team. This is identify element based on deep learning image recognition. If AI card is specified, specified neural network determines the correct, find the correct AI card element and if AI card image is found, it returns. This is not template match. But uh, in, based on semantic meaning of uh, locator, if such is uh, cut. So why this, why this can possible? Yeah, it is because uh, neural network uh, was trained by many icon and uh, icons name. So if 
if you specify the unknown icon name, this doesn't work. But this AI locator has multiple problems. One problem is, is AI recognition result is not always perfect. For some images, it's even for some cut, cut images, it doesn't work well. It might, might be doesn't work well. And another problem is you need to know which AI locator can be used before trying AI locator. So it is a little troublesome. But despite these challenges, we use AI locator as a very important part of our web service. Currently, due to historical reason, we use our own logic and our own model and our own training data. But to, but to switch to more OSS-centric approach, we are now not trying to rely to our AI locator by based on APIM's classifier plugin. Maybe it is finished within this month. So I, then next, I will show you the example of how we use AI locator. Uh, first usage is UI map generation. If user captures, cap, uh, if user clicks capture button, current UI images and uh, UI3 XML are, are automatically uploaded. And uh, based on neural network, UI map is generated. And UI map here means human, pair of human readable name and locator. Even if locator is uh, mm, Cryptic, cryptic, like button one or XML. Yeah. Yeah. Neural network can identify human readable name based on the meaning. Icon, icon looks and OCR result. It can display the menu name like menu icon, search icon, or other icon. Uh, this is example of UI image recognition. As you can see, menu icon or search icon, add icon, camera icon, and I message. These, these human readable names are generated by deep learning rec image recognition or OCR recognition result. And also another use case are AI locate, uh, directory find element by AI locator. As I, can, as I can say, UI map are generated by magic pot and uh, UI map includes uh, locator and uh, other candidates are also displayed. And if AI locator is possible, AI locator is also displayed here. So you, user can easily know whether he can use uh, AI locator or not by just using this command. So the solution for the problem is the stable pro stability problem is resolved by using for UI map. Because even if human readable name is wrong, user can e easily tweak this wrong name. So we use this AI locator only for, only for the case the wrong result is not a big problem. And, and the next, for next problem, we suggest AI locator when it is possible. So user can easily know whether AI locator is OK or not. And so next co command is hide keyboard for Japanese. But maybe it is not important for most users, so I'd like to skip this thing here. And the next topic is about uh, how to make APM more reliable and stable. This is consists of two parts. One part is how to prevent the regression of APM. And the second, second part is how to resolve existing if we handle APM problem. The solution for first part is relatively simple. Just prepare a test set for APM. I know APM already has its own unit test set and its, its test set. So main purpose of this test set is to cover important feature for magic port. Headless, reduced motion, sessionless source, parallel test, and so on. 
And this covers uh, all combination, Android, iOS, ER device, emulator, simulator, and so on. We use this test for checking RPM quality, and uh, only when all test passes, up next we integrate the next version of RPM to our code. And so this here is the, our regression test. And recently, we, we began to write uh, whether RPM's new version passes our old test or not. You may check if you want to know the RPM's stability for ne any next version. And, uh, OK, by this, by this test, we can easily identify the RPM bug and uh, determine whether this is RPM or a magic, magic pot problem. It helped our, implement, our development and, uh, yeah, quality became much stable. So next topic is how to resolve the RPM issue if we hand. First solution is simple, just reporting issue and submitting problem. PR, uh, sorry, pull request. Actually, I already sent multiple issues and pull requests. And also, we, we collaborate with the uh, APM committer. During, some, during the, my, my experience of sending issues or pull requests, I, I sometimes feel the problem is very difficult. Sometimes deep knowledge of RPM is required and uh, it is beyond my skill. So, but, but very luckily, I have a RPM committer friend and so I asked him. He's Kazukokoa and uh, he also joined this conference and uh, had multiple sessions. So he, he's now at Hetospin, but uh, when I, at this time, he is at a different company. So, so luckily, he accepted my offer, and uh, he helped us by providing uh, some consultation or uh, fixing RPM, RPM issue if necessary, yeah, as his side work. And we, we share the reproduction environment to him. So we use uh, this actually use this RPM regression check environment for sharing the test problem with he, him. And so based on this pre-request problem report, he sent many pre-requests. I really thank to him. And final solution for, for the problem is easy bug report feature. Actually, Actually, we have multiple, many users and uh, from many environment and uh, devices and capabilities, they report various kind of problems. So each time I need to exchange, please, uh, please send us exchange, uh, RPM log or a test case. So it is very troublesome and uh, spend uh, much our time. So the solution is simple. We add the inquiry button on the test case result page. If you if user find any problem, by just by clicking button, uh, RPM log and uh, test script are, are sent to us, and uh, we can easily determine or identify the problem. Thanks to this pro this feature, troubleshooting become much easier. And of course, this. Mm, this feature is very good for us, but uh, has, some pro has some problem. And luckily, half of inquiries are actually not a bug, just a usage mistake or, uh, or ju just, how, just inquiry about how to use MagicPot or RPM. Now, if it is open source project, it is uh, problematic, maybe. And developers must be exhausted. But uh, we are not open source and commercial tool, so such inquiries are usually welcome. We can, we can have contact with potential customer. So, and uh, sub also support team can categorize reported issue and uh, whether this is RPM's problem or a magic pot problem or just a usage problem. So, 
and uh, report uh, to the only to the APM's problem to to APM project team. So this is all what we did. Finally, I'd like to introduce our future plan and the conclusion. First future plan is selective use of express driver and UI automatics driver. As you may already know, express driver is more stable and faster than normal UI automatics driver. But at the same time, UI automatics driver has also another advantage. It means you, it can try it can manipulate multiple application. Although I had a yesterday's session on how to call UI automatic express session, it is, I think, it is pa not perfectly exchangeable. So maybe the best solution is launching both session and switching to driver when necessary. We are planning to do so this for the future. And also, as I've as already said, switching to WD node, WD to WebDriver IO is also necessary. Even Node WD project member said uh, this is not uh, recommended and uh, WebDriver IO is better. So switching is necessary. And switching AI model to APM Classifier plugin is also a future theme of our tool. And finally, I want to continue to contribute to APM in some way. Sending pull request or sending issue report. Yeah, good issue report, not, not so garbage report. So for such a way, I want to continue to APM in some way. So I always thank to APM good contributors and committers. Yeah. My talk is that all. Thank you so much.